In the Gospel of Luke, the 16th chapter, the first verse, we're told of a beggar named Lazarus. Lazarus stood at the door of a rich man. Lazarus was in need. Lazarus begged for a response of food. Lazarus begged for help from the rich man. But the rich man refused to help him. The parable tells us that at the death, the rich man found himself in hell. Jesus teaches us the lesson that although we love to stand in pulpits and preach hell to sinners for what they do, the truth is you can go to hell for simply doing nothing. On November, on November 2nd, 2013, Renisha McBride, like Lazarus in the scriptures, stood at the door looking, knocking for help, trying to get home. She was injured, disorientated by the crash that she was involved in. In the case of Renisha, she was not only ignored the help that she needed, but she was met with a bullet of death. Now, Theodore Wafer may have pulled the trigger, but the truth is the gun was loaded by a society where race and racism runs in the DNA of America's bloodstream. The gun was loaded where prejudice and bigotry had become as acceptable and normal as the air we breathe. The gun was loaded we're a society where guns and violence have become part of America's wardrobe and culture, where guns and violence are a staple of nightly news and Hollywood's entertainment. Yes, Theodore Wafer may have pulled the trigger, but the gun was loaded by an unjust an unequal society that fosters fear and distrust of each other and values some lives over another. Where the problem is not that young people are saying black lives matter, but the problem is that in 2014, we have to still tell America that black lives matter because it still doesn't get it. The tragedy the tragedy, though, is there are thousands, thousands of Renisha McBrides knocking at our doors for help, knocking at the church doors, knocking at our house doors, knocking at government doors for help. Thousands that are knocking at our doors, suffocating from failed education systems, that snatch the future of our children and rob them of purpose and dignity and, de and destiny and put them in a pipeline to prison. The tragedy is there's thousands knocking at our doors, shackled in poverty, wondering where their next meal will come from, and crawling up under a cardboard box to sleep tonight. Yes, the tragedy is there's thousands knocking at our doors, bondage by unemployment, making them unable to provide for themselves or their families. And if you have a record, you're told the only place that will hire you is a privatized prison system. And if you're black or brown, if they didn't like you before you had a record, what the hell makes you think they're going to like you when you have a record? knocking at our doors, having been thrown to the side of Jericho's road, left to die by the evils of racism, classism, sexism, and capitalism, a society that is more angry about Michael Vick's dogs than the killing of black and brown children across America every day.
The tragedy is there are thousands knocking at our doors, disorientated by the crash of a world where the American dream is nothing but a broken promise and a lived nightmare. But the question is, what will we do? What will you and I do now? Will we respond like Theodore Wafer and simply pull the trigger of guns loaded by an unjust world and just say that that's the kind of world we live in? Will we respond like the rich man in the scriptures and ignore the knocking of our brothers and sisters and letting people die by abandonment and neglect and risk the judgment of going to hell for doing nothing? Will we continue to hide in our churches where prophetic preaching has been suffocated by spiritual laryngitis and faith? Faith! Faith without works is making Christianity a dead religion today. Will we understand that what makes us authentic is not what we do here, but what we do when we leave these doors? Or will, or will we choose to go to the door and answer it? And like Dr. King say, I choose. I choose to identify with the underprivileged. I choose to identify with the poor. I choose to give my life to the hungry. I choose to give my life to those who have been left out of the sunlight of opportunities. And if that means suffering a little, if it means sacrificing a little, if it means dying, I will go that way because I heard a voice say, do something for others. Brothers and sisters, tragically, it's too late to do anything for Renisha, but it's not too late to do something for the brothers and sisters that are knocking at our doors. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, what are you going to do? Do you have the ears? to hear the voice of a God that says, do something and change it? And even better, do you have the courage yeah. to go to the door and answer it? What are you gonna do?